Hello everyone, my name is Lawthorn, and welcome to How To Sons of Sin, a mod by Fruity2 for Minecraft version 1.19.2 for Forge and using Java Edition Minecraft. Sons of Sin is a necromancy spirit magic mod with the theme of the seven deadly sins being the monsters within it. It has a few interesting mechanics, nothing groundbreaking, but it's worth a look. As any good evil necromancy mod, spirit magic sort of thing going on, the mod starts off with you want to collect bones and string. You then want to build yourself probably this Osios axe, although it's called the Osios pickaxe, which I think may be a mistake, as this is also the Osios pickaxe. Three bones on top, one string in the middle, and a bone on the bottom, and that will build you the pickaxe. And the Osios Osseous tools make all weapons and tools, although I'd only recommend making the axe called the pickaxe. What you do with these weapons is you go ahead and you murder fuzzy little creatures. And with the axe's nine damage, you can insta-kill most creatures. Killing creatures with these weapons gives you ether ash. Each creature gives you one ether ash, unless you take out an iron golem. Iron golems give around 10. Golems are one of the faster ways to get, depending on how your farms are set up, you can either take out golems or animals, whatever. Seems the most efficient way to get the dust. With this dust, you can make more things. One of the main things you make is soul steel, made by placing ether ash and iron in this pattern. Soul steel can be turned into the sickle of struggle with this sort of L shaping a stick. Sickle of struggle is another tool for harvesting. And it sounds quite pleasant. Like it's got this sort of liquidy, and then there's a very heavy thunk, a very meaty sort of crunch whenever you take something down. And also, the animals that are taken down will drop their internal organs. Creepers will drop their own different kinds of flesh, which will be the creeper ribs. Endermen will drop ender muscle. Blazes drop the blazing heart, and iron golems drop the golems cuirass. All these body parts can be eaten for different effects. The basic body part that you get from most creatures that aren't listed on the special will give you a lure, which makes monsters attack you rather than your friends, so you can trigger kiting. Creeper words make it so upon your death you should explode. Ender muscle gives you instincts which whenever you take instances of damage, you have a chance of teleporting away from that damaging situation. The Golem's Curious, however, cannot be eaten unlike the other body parts, but has other uses later on. Finally, the Blazing Heart makes it so you emit steam every once in a while, and the steam lights things on fire that get hit by it for a brief instance. Another thing that the Sickle Struggle gets you is bottles of blood. If you have an empty glass bottle in your inventory and you strike a target with the Sickle of Struggle, it'll turn that into a bottle of blood. Besides making the Sickle of Struggle, Soul Steel can also be turned into Soul Steel blocks, can later be turned into Soul Steel tiles, which can be turned into Soul Steel stairs, and a Soul Steel slabs. These blocks are not only decorative, but also stop all mob griefy, including the Withers Blasts. So it was a great way to harvest withers. After you've killed yourself a few withers contained in boxes with extreme ease, you can get on to the more dangerous parts of the mod, such as combining bottles of blood and either ash with a bucket to create buckets of blood. Now, buckets of blood by themselves are pretty innocent. They become dangerous when you put them on the ground, making a puddle. A puddle of blood is used to create crystallized ether. This is done by putting 16 ether ash into the puddle of blood. So 64 should give me four crystallized ether. It also screams at you. This is used for further recipes in the mod. Now the real danger comes if you accidentally fall into the puddle of blood. In creative mode, it's not going to do anything. However, in non-creative mode, spending too much time in the puddle will kill you. It also summons one of the Sons of Sin, which the mod is named after. Now you may notice that the Son of Sin has a really annoying effect and is instantly killing me. In my estimate, they're a little overpowered. As you can see, this fine fellow here is sporting 840 health and hits like a train. 
They also have the ability to destroy blocks so they can walk through your shelters and attack you. So you can't really shelter in place from them. They also will destroy your spawn, which is an excessively annoying habit they have. Or they can't break through the soul steel blocks, which makes it a very handy shield against them trying to against you. So, I'd recommend surrounding your bedroom in this and all your valuables. Another interesting feature about soul steel is it can be manipulated, unlike obsidian, with pistons. Besides the soul steel blocks, there is also soul steel armor to protect you from the suns. They've got the remnant helmet, the remnant chest piece requiring that crystallized ether, the remnant leggings, and the remnant boots. This sword gives you that dapper looking outfit you saw at the beginning of the showcase. Now supposedly this armor makes your survival a lot better, but it does need powering with this urn, made with bricks and ether dust in the middle, and then you fill up the urn by right clicking and then putting the ether ash into it, and this will give it a little green symbol. This will power your armor. Now against basic enemies, this armor is kind of rubbish. It's not the most amazing, but it's not terrible. It's plus five armor. It's, I think, equivalent to diamond. However, against the sins, it definitely does save your life at the cost of the ash. It also makes an awful racket, and it only helps a little bit, and their damage effects HP pool is just still too overwhelming. But it's better than nothing. Now, something else this urn charges is the Aether Sword, made with two Aether Crystals and a Soul Steel at the bottom. The Aether Sword heals you a small amount of health every time you hit enemies, and also uses up some of the Aether in your urn to power it. So, basically, harvest monsters and then you have a life-stealing sword. Crystallized Aether gives us a fairly powerful sword. It can also give us a fairly powerful tool in the Shapeshifting Tool. This is made with soul steel and crystallized ether in the shape of a normal pickaxe. This tool's nature is, every time you dig with it, it'll turn into the most appropriate tool for the job. Its durability is also based on the amount of ash you have, which means it actually goes through its durability fairly fast. But its durability can be refilled by whacking monsters. It has three different forms, axe mode, shovel mode, and pick mode, and it seems to have a fairly decent speed. The necromancing you can do within this mod is done with the leftover carcasses. If you take the ribs and make them into a pattern like a chest, you can create a flesh carcass. The flesh carcass has to be filled up with all sorts of body part, blood, and either ash. That being the flesh demise, the ribs, the heart, the muscle, and all that good stuff. But it can also be filled up with the special body bits being the creeper ribs, the ender muscles, blazing heart, and the golem's cuirass, making it stronger and thus enhancing your undead little minion. To make it actually come into the world, right clicking on the ground doesn't work. You have to throw it into a puddle of blood, and this will summon your friend. He will become friends with the first creature he sees. So if your buddy is nearby while you're playing and trying to summon your undead doggo monster, then they will become his friend first. It can be fed bits of flesh to heal it, and you can make him sit so he doesn't run about ruining everything. You can also make just about as many as the cute buggers as you like, if you have the resources for it. Now on to the final part of the mod, the Sons of Sin. Each one is very powerful, each representing the different sins, you know, gluttony, lust, wrath, all that. However, they seem to only appear if you go as a human sacrifice, or Steve sacrifice, into a pool of blood. Destroying the pool of blood and creating one of the seven. So, you could put a pool of blood in your friend's base, then jump into it, griefing him, summoning an ultra-powerful monster, or if you want to summon one of them and trap it in a sort of cage like this, hoping that as the bed, you can go ahead and throw yourself into the old puddle. Supposedly, there is a chance of the Sons of Sin getting summoned when you're throwing the Aether Ash into the blood puddle, performing the blood rituals, performing the dark necromag magic. I have not encountered this once yet, in all my testing. And I set up some macros to test this. Didn't work. Supposedly also, the sins can spawn in the world randomly. I haven't encountered that yet either. I'm not saying it's impossible, I'm saying I haven't encountered it yet. If for some reason you want to summon them, to harvest them, because they do give you a valuable resource, or if you're worried about your, or if you're worried about your ritual going awry, 
or if you're worried about your ritual going awry and accidentally summoning the monsters, update comes along, changes how it works, then I give you the Johnny 2000 chamber. My chamber for sinning. This is an amazing baby we got here for you folks. We got the blood remover, pull this lever, and pow, blood is gone from the chamber. Then you can retrieve whatever rituals you're doing from down here. Pull this lever, opens up, drops the ritual down, set it back in place, fill it up with blood again. Now if we come up with the staircase here, we have our wonderful airlock system. In here, we throw in our ether ash, or your friend ready for sacrifice. We pull the lever, we pull it again, and whatever creature that may be summoned from the result can't get out. None of them can fit through a half block gap, although some can fit through a one block gap, and some of them can fly. Thus, the air locking system. The chamber also comes with a lever to pour lava down into the chamber to wipe out the sin if it's a little too powerful for your puny weapons to destroy. And the blood is also cleaned up for us. All right, demonstration time. I'm going to have to do a little bit of cheating as I have no assistance, nor did I have time to set up another laptop with this running on it. We are going to cheat the system a little bit here. Then we will enter survival mode and summon one of the sons, one of the brothers. Ooh, looks like we got an interesting one. He's a lively fellow. Hello. This one here, we could actually farm by ourselves. Doesn't have any projectiles, and if we want, we could kill him through this little gap here. That will take some time, though, so a little bit of entertainment while I'm at it. go and open up the lever drops some lovely flesh a lot of either dust and some creepy bloody bones stronger than steel sharper than a razor's blade these can be used to make all sorts of fun items well, actually not really they can make basic items and we're gonna go look at those now the bloody bones are acquired from the sons of sin and they can make a pickaxe an axe a sword, a shovel, and a hoe. And they are indestructible. So they have no durability. They just work as the tool. Sort of what it says on the tin, if you would. The hoe hoes, the shovel digs, pickaxe mines, the axe chops, and the sword swings. But for how hard? Well, we have some tools for comparison. Now, if we look at the raw stats, the bone weapons seem to be about equivalent in damage to their diamond counterparts, which isn't that bad. Diamond axe, if it's indestructible, that's pretty good. Diamond sword, indestructible, that's pretty good. Pickaxe deals a little less damage. Stats are looking pretty good on them so far. However, when it comes to their actual world acting speed, if you might have noticed earlier in our demonstration, this is the speed of about a diamond pickaxe through six blocks of stone. And then this is the speed of the bone pickaxe, which is about the speed of an iron pickaxe, slightly slower, which is a right shame, but they can be enchanted. An enchanted indestructible item is actually a game changer. If you can take down the Sons of Sins and gather enough resources to get one of their powerful tools, you can get some very deadly weapons. Sharpness five on this sword, whew, it's dealing damage. Efficiency five on this pickaxe, it's actually quite fast, and it's not running out of durability. Slap some more enchantments on that, you know, Silk Touch maybe, or you're feeling lucky, put that on there, that sort of idea. 
you can get a very, very good item through that enchantment, albeit through fighting a rather strong enemy. But remember with that Chamber of Sin, it's not going to be nearly as strong. So let's look at all the sins then, shall we? First we have Wist Iver. This represents Gluttony. He has 750 HP. He can fly. He hits very hard. Every time he kills you, he becomes stronger. Amps up way too fast. Seems to be doing all right for now. And the dogs are actually... Nope, he's killed me again. Okay. Yeah, the armor actually seems fairly decent defense against... Oh, he took me out again. All right, that's another death down. There we go. Okay. So we beat him in a fair fight. After him is the walking bed. Representation of sloth. We know all about this guy. A lot of health. Very, very tanky. However, you will notice that the Sinful Sword does bonus damage against the Deadly Sins. Does about 60 damage per hit, which is pretty upgraded. After him is Blub. Blub represents greed. And he has the most annoying effect in combat ever, which is he sends you below ground to drown in the dirt. After Blub, we have the Prowler. Prowler represents pride. His speed is his main thing. So he crawls along the ground, which is kind of ironic as like crawling in your belly is not very prideful. He is kind of stupid fast. He can also climb walls like a spider. Their AI isn't the most brilliant. I will say that. Get down here. That may be a mistake. After the Prowler, we have Kelvin, which is a kind of weird name for a sinful entity spawned of the Seven Deadly Sins, but he represents Envy. Jealous of his friends, he's made cybernetic prosthetics, but they only slow him down in compared to his brothers now. And... It says slows him down to the description. Their speed is just absurd. The only reason I'm standing a chance is I'm using these sinful weapons. After Kelvin, the envious, we have Butcher, the wrathful. He's got a split head and also a prosthetic arm, so I'm not even certain how the other guy with prosthetics is unique. Okay, no, he's very fast as well. He is faster than Kelvin. Kelvin's slow, yes, compared to them. Jesus. Ah. Finally, we have the most annoying of the lot, in my opinion. Second most annoying. Blub's the most annoying. We have Curse, which represents a lust. And he has his own effect he applies, which is he very slowly drifts, and he sucks you to him and strips you of your armor. And that makes him also the worst. He can also fit through small places, so I, I really don't like Curse. Take that. There we go. Got him. And that's all the sins. And that is how to the Sons of Sin mod. Wounds of Chaos. Subtext. The Sons are ridiculously OP, however, there does appear to be ways to deal with them. This armor, the Remnant's armor, is kind of rubbish. Maybe if you notch apples, go on apples helping you out. Maybe some friends to help you take them down as well, trying to, contain, trying to contain them with soul steel blocks. That would work. Normal play. Sin Chamber, I think is also a good idea. Mild Johnny Chamber. I think that's brilliant. Does require you to sacrifice the life of a player to get it done, so if experience is precious to you, it's going to make it a little bit more different. Cult, I'd recommend spending all your XP for jumping into that blood pool. Can't really do that in creative mode. Some people in the comments I did read have complained about these guys spawning in their hardcore runs without them being in blood pools. I haven't encountered them spawning in the world at all. Maybe I haven't gone to the right location yet. That could be on me. If so, I apologize for that. And you're right, hooped, because they're way too fast and way too powerful, even if you have a weapon designed to kill them in the Sword of Sin. The gear is interesting. I really like the dog. I think the dog is the best bit of it. The Remnant Sword, the Remnant Armor look cool. Soul mechanic gathering is also cool. Other mods do it. Different ideas is definitely a different take. Now, in the comments, the mod maker said he was doing a massive overhaul around Halloween, which is when I record this. It was last updated on the 27th of October 2023 and that is the day of recording is the 29th of that day so if it's updated since then and all this information is absolutely useless to you I do apologize but still makes it interesting to watch and if you're playing with an older version and perhaps an older mod pack or you want to play with the older version then you can use this guy to continually help you out with it I would recommend 
if you're changing things, perhaps make the Renaissance armor protect you a little bit more so you can win the fight. Maybe make it so they don't blast purely through shields or give a remnant shield of some sort just to help in the fight against them and reduce their HP because, well, the Sinful Sword does deal a lot of damage to them, which is fair, I'll grant you that. You have to kill one of them in the first place to get the Sinful Sword, and these things are absolutely brutal to kill, and if you don't want to cheese the game to kill them, which is what I did, either you have to have a lot of OP mods installed, or have a lot of friends or be doing something insane, which might as well be cheesing, it's the same approach that I do. Everything else in the mod though, super cool, I actually like it. The design of the Sin, pretty interesting. Um, it's not my favorite, but it's not the worst in the world. I have very hefty opinions on what the Seven Deadly Sins should look like. That's just my own bias. I still think they're cool looking models, like especially like the bed. Just look at him, he, he, he's a walking bed. It's, that's just a fun design. That's a good design for Sloth. Definitely top tier design. I really like him. If you like this video, well, happy for that. Recommend another mod you want how to, and I'll catch you in the next showcase slash how to. And hopefully this won't be a garbled mess in the end. All right. Thank you very much for watching. And until next time, goodbye.